Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome to another Illustration Masterclass. I am, today I'm looking at uh, Katsuya Tirada. I actually had a chance to see Tirada draw live uh, when I went to the uh, Trojan Horse as a Unicorn event that was held in uh, Japan not too long ago. And uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to, to look at some of his work. I only pulled together a few pieces here. Um, and so we're just going to kind of look at the compositional elements. This will be kind of a short video, but I, I think I found a couple of interesting things that are worth observing about some of his work. Uh, just real quick, I do want to make an announcement that um, I'm going to be putting some, some videos together. It's going to be showing more of my process for doing my comic stuff and some of the other illustration stuff it is that I'm working on. Uh, I've got some live streams that I'm going to be doing with other comic artists here pretty soon coming up. Uh, so please stay tuned to this channel. I'm about to be putting up tons of cool stuff, live streams and that sort of thing. Uh, so it'll be fun. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's jump into this real quick. Uh, now, whenever I look at this piece that he did for Final Fantasy, there's a couple of things it is that I notice, right? Uh, so if we zoom out of the image we can start to see that there is, uh, there is a, it's a, there's a very coherent image that's being put together here, right? And even if you zoom out even more, uh, it's still somewhat readable. Um, we can start to see that there's an organization principle that's going on within this image. There is a contrast between the orange warmth of the figure here and then the blue coolness of the figure here. Uh, there's also a balance between these darker shapes over here and these lighter shapes over here. right? And then there's kind of like this bridge element that's connecting these two sides with uh, this suit that this, this woman is wearing, which is darker but it's also carrying over to this other side of the image, right? Uh, so there's an organization between these different, these different value structures here. And when we put a black filter over it, uh, we can see it even more clearly the way it is that he's organized these, these different elements of the picture in terms of value, right? Um, this is just an example of of how you can use value to organize an image to where it becomes very, it's something that's very readable for the person that's looking at it, right? Uh, so I did a quick draw over of some of the other things it is that I noticed, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up here. Um, so there's a couple of different things that are going on here. There is a circular motion that is following throughout this entire piece. It goes throughout the entire thing. Um, just like this, there's this moon here. Uh, you could say that our eye is supposed to basically follow this around in one circle. Uh, you know, we have this moon shape here, and then we also have the same moon shape back here behind the figure on the on the right side of the piece. Um, but there's a couple of key things it is that he does. Uh, for one thing, he doesn't stretch out this arm right here. Instead, he takes the arm and he pushes it downwards like a downwards punch, uh, which is important because it basically frames the right side of the drawing from going off of the page, right? Because he's looking, if we look at the figure, he's looking off of the actual image. Um, but we don't want the person to be looking off of the image. We want them to, to stay on the image. So you could think of this as almost like the curve of a circle that's following the path of his arm, and it's taken us to this figure here, who is, uh, let me zoom in here. So this figure here on the bottom, uh, unlike the two figures up top, is pointing his body and his expression of his face to the left of the image, okay? So our eye comes down here and it connects with this character. And this character is, is matching eyes with, with this other character over here on this other side. 
um, but it also directs our attention not just to this character over here, but to this character here. So again, it's like a, it's like an invisible circle. There's converging lines that are uh, converging shapes that are carrying throughout this whole piece. And so we follow the arm of her, and if we follow the arm of this character that's in the most foreground, we start to see that this connects directly with the with the same level of this woman's fist and it carries up and it takes us right to her face which is looking again towards the inside of the piece so she's looking to the right while the figure on the right is looking to the left okay again if if we think about it this way if these two characters were flipped and they were looking both off of the page uh, the image just wouldn't, it wouldn't feel organized. You know, that's not to say that it might not necessarily work still, but it wouldn't feel organized, right? Uh, we continue up the image and we see this figure here is, is doing what? He's making an L shape with his hand and he's pointing upwards, okay? He's pointing upwards. Uh, again, imagine if he was pointing out and his arm was cut off on this side of the piece. It just wouldn't make any sense, right? Um, now, he's pointing up, and, uh, you know, of course this coincides with this lightning strike in the background, but also the gesture of the body we see here is going up, but it's slightly curved, slightly curved, as if he's arching his back and he's throwing his arms up. And this curve carries us to the face, but you could also say that it, it naturally extends to, um, to this guy's hair. It's over here on this side, right? So it's carrying through the image. And then, of course, we have this centerpiece that's right here in the middle, uh, which is this circular shape. And then we have his arms crossed. So he has this circle and this X composition going on in the painting. And then we see the same sort of like crossing of the arms in this figure here. So let me turn off these layers again and let's take another look at it with it back on color. Now we can see very clearly now that there is a high level of organization. You have the values of uh, light and dark that are on either side. And note that uh, just because, you know, there's darker values uh, with the two characters on the right, um, they are also counterbalanced by a light value that is behind them that is creating the, um, that is helping create the, the figure's silhouette on the right. And likewise, on the left, uh, these characters are lighter in, in terms of their value structure. Uh, but they have a darker background. So he's using those, he's using light on dark and dark on light in order to push those forward, okay? And, and because of that, they have more contrast to them than this figure in the center has. If we look at the value structure of the figure in the center, the values are much closer together, meaning that if I take my uh, dropper here, and I pull up my, my values. So you see my values over here on the side. And we pick what looks like uh, the darkest value on this figure here, right? The darkest value is this right here. And we see that that, that gets down here into this range. But what if we look at the darkest value on this guy, which is going to be his hair, much closer to black right and we can see that even the lightest the lightest values on him are still pretty well I guess the the light over here is pretty light but if we look at the lightest values on this figure we see that that it, it can get pretty light right and then we have these midtones that he's using that are all kind of 
staying close together. So you could say the value structure on this figure here, they're much closer together. The values are much more sandwiched together. Whereas he's using the contrast of this darker figure with this light background. And so there is a greater contrast between the darkest darks and the lightest lights on this figure. And again, it's the same thing it is that we see when we look uh, on this side, right? Uh, there is a greater contrast between the lightest lights, which would be this right here, which is pure white. Even here, this is this is pretty light, and the darkest darks on this figure. That's a, that's a pretty dark dark. Same thing with this. This is basically black black. That's basically black. These values are all pretty dark. And so he's contrasting them. Whereas, like I said, these values are much closer together. And then we see this similar thing going on down here. Where does this fall into? There's a pretty strong contrast between the darkest uh, darks here and the lightest lights, right? Same thing on this figure. And I would say that she falls into uh, somewhere in between what's going on with this figure and some more of the contrast that you see in these other figures because she has a very light light here on the face which is basically white and then she has a very dark dark in the hair right and notice that even even here in the in the face what's really interesting is is that uh, we have something that's basically pulling our eye up and we're going like this and this dark shape is creating this kind of um, this dark shape that goes around the lightest shape which is her face right so we have this very dark shape that is connecting to um, this very dark shape that is surrounding this very light shape on her face and it's connecting with this shadow on her shoulder And of course, we have like these this very dark shape down here on the bottom. We even have this figure here, which is an interesting element as well that we didn't talk about. But it's basically a triangle shape, and this triangle shape pushes our eye up, right? And it also adds as a as an element of uh, a balance, you could say, right? So there's a high level of organization that's going on with the values, with the shapes, with the way it is that he's posing the different figures, how it is that he has this guy looking this way, this guy looking this way. They're all looking off the page, right? Meanwhile, he's looking right at you. She's looking right at you. And then these two characters are looking in the opposite directions at one another, right? So a high level of organization going on in this image that, uh, that, that makes it work, all right? So I'm gonna pull back out on this image again. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible painting, uh, incredible illustration. And uh, these are the sort of things that is you wanna keep in mind when you're doing your own work. Let's take a look just real quickly at one or two other pieces. I just did a draw over on this one as well. Let me go ahead and pull that up. And do like a fill. Okay, so um, I just did that just so I could pull up this here. Uh, now there's different converging lines that are going on in this image that make it pretty unique and pretty interesting. Um, for one, we have, for example, the, um, the converging lines of this sword, which is uh, cutting through the top half of the piece. Uh, this, con this is converging to her lips, right? Um, you can notice also a couple other similar things. Uh, the top half of the image is basically going to the left whereas the uh, general motion of the bottom right of the image is going to the right. 
and he's using a lot of dynamically posed figures uh, that are moving in opposite directions, but also you have these other shapes, such as the pillar in the background. Uh, he has this on a diagonal, and the thing to understand about diagonals is, is that we use diagonals, diagonal positioning of shapes and characters and background elements as a way to create a sense of dynamicism. And that completely contrasts against an image like this one, uh, which is the last one we're going to look at today, which is the opposite of a dynamic image, right? Whereas in the this image here, uh, we're seeing a lot of motion, we're seeing a lot of uh, dynamicism, and we're getting this sense that something is about to happen. There's a story taking place here. Uh, this one feels much more like a cover art piece. This feels much more like something that could be like a, a pinup poster or something along those lines. And, uh, you know, like we, we can see that there's different elements that he's using that are very similar to what we talked about before of taking these different elements and organizing them. Uh, you know, you could say that this central figure uh, is very much like a, is very much like a triangle. Uh, which is very typical for illustrators that are trying to convey a character that has strength to it, right? But he's not just a he's not just a uh, a static figure, right? Like there's a sense of motion that's going on in the actual image, as if he's about to step. He's about to step with his with his right foot. Um, this is something that's like so subtle, the subtle way that he's that he's taking the uh, gesture and he's turning, he's doing something where he's turning just the shoulders up and the hip is slightly angled. Uh, this is a very subtle thing where you have the hips and the shoulder angled uh, at opposite angles. And whenever it is that you do this, it creates a sense of motion, it creates a sense of dynamicism in your gesture. And I think this drawing is a really good example of, of showing that it doesn't have to be uh, something as dynamic as this. You know, if we look at this, we can again, we can see that there is a, there is a dynamicism even in the angle of the hips and in the angle of the shoulders. Uh, these, these are actually going in the same direction as opposed to the angle it is that we see here. Uh, however, the effect is the same, it's just to different, uh, to different levels, right? He didn't want, with this image, it would be very boring if he was just standing perfectly still and both sides of his body were at the same angle. It, it wouldn't look interesting. But from the way it is that he did this gesture, we get this sense that Conan is moving through a physical space, right? Even though the image itself is very, uh, it feels very abstract. Like I said, it feels like a, like a cover to a, to a comic. It doesn't feel like a, um, a comic panel. Uh, the other thing we can notice that we'll make note of, and then we'll close this video out, is that again he's using that same concept of separating the separating different elements in the drawing uh, by giving a different value structure. So the, the Conan figure in the foreground has a stronger contrast between the darkest darks and the lightest lights in the figure itself as opposed to the background, which is much closer in terms of values, right? So again, we can, we can do the same little exercise, and this is a good way to understand value is taking people's art and doing doing these sorts of analysis, right? So we see that this is, you know, it's a pretty dark dark. And we can see it does go down into a darker dark. But these these lights, they don't really get that light. You know, they're staying around like if, if I was to put like a one up here and a ten down here, they're staying around the five to ten or five to eight range. That's what these background values are doing, right? Uh, but, and then in this foreground, what is he doing? He's got this super dark dark, and then he's got these super lights, right? 
So he's, he's using the light to carve the forms out. And he's doing that also not just with the light, but also with his line work, which is what's really cool about his work is that he has a strong use of line work. And when we zoom in here, we can start to see how he's using these lines to basically curve around these shapes, right? He's following the churn of the shape. Now you can see it here in the, in the shoulder, the way it is that these muscles lay on top of one another and that they curve upwards, All right? So anyway, um, again, thanks for, thanks for checking out this video. I, I appreciate everybody who drops a comment or likes or subscribes for these. Um, feel free to let me know if there's an artist it is that you'd like for me to look at. And like I said, please keep an eye out on more videos coming up. I've got podcasts where I'm interviewing independent artists and just highlighting like people that I really love that are doing creative stuff. Um, so I'll be posting more of those on this channel. I've also got uh, some some progress on my comic that I'll be that I'll be posting about on this channel as well, uh, as well as a couple of free comics that you can already download from me in the description box below. I've also got prints and other stuff uh, for people that are interested. All my links are in the description. Uh, as well as Tarada's links. All of his social media stuff is in the description box below. Uh, again, thanks guys for watching, and uh, take it easy. Take care.